Hello. How many of you have played video games in the past month? Well, we're not the only ones. 58% of Americans play video games. 48% of those are girls. Video games can be played on numerous different devices, such as a console, like a PlayStation or an Xbox. They can be played on a computer or even a smartphone. Now, how many times have you heard video games are a waste of time or that they socially isolate you and that they rot your mind? You see, some people perceive video games as something negative, when in reality, they're actually not so bad for you. Today, I'm gonna talk about video games and how they are not bad for you. Now, there are three different statements about video games that we commonly hear. The first being that they are a waste of time. Just like anything though, too much of one thing can have a negative impact and video games also should be used in moderation. Second is that video games are good for stress. Many of us that are going to college study hours a day for a week straight so that we can do well on an exam. I know that for myself, after a long day of work, I like to come home and exert my bad attitude playing a video game. Video games also allow you to focus on something else. One study shows that video games refresh the mind and prepare the body for another stage of stress. This can be especially useful while attending college and going through tests and homework. Another popular phrase about games is that gamers are socially isolated, and this is especially not true. Online games enables players to engage in a particular game simultaneously. That means this, my friend and I, although we live separate, can play a game together and communicate with one another. And depending on the game we're playing, whether we're solving a quest or doing a puzzle, it requires us to communicate with each other constantly. The third point is that gamers have a large community. I'm sure all of you have heard of YouTube and I bet you did not know that 35% of the largest YouTubers are gamers. That means that a bunch of people are logging on and talking with one another about video games. In a study I conducted, 90% of 50 people at SEU have either played a game with somebody cooperatively or competitively. In a similar study, 70% of people in the US play video games with friends. A third popular statement is that video games rot your mind. And like food, video games also provide certain benefits depending on the video game you're playing. A few examples of these video games is action games. A 2014 January issue of American Psychologist points out that action games improve cognitive performance while all games improve problem solving. For instance, Call of Duty focuses on several things, forces the player to focus on several things while cha noticing change in color and audio and even movement. This requires quick hand-eye coordination. According to Rochester Train, players make faster decisions without losing accuracy. Another type of game is a puzzle game. These require memory, problem solving, better visual and spatial skills, and improved attention. All of which are very useful skills in life, and especially while going through college. Today we talked about the phrases that we hear all the time about video games and how people perceive them to be this negative thing. We talked about how they aren't a waste of time and how they actually can help with stress and how they don't socially isolate you because most people actually tend to play with friends and how there's a large online community with people that they can connect with. Third, we spoke about how video games do not rot your mind and instead they improve coordination, memory, cognitive performance, problem solving, and even multitasking. These are often heard statements that are misleading that are spread around people about gaming. I hope people can take this information and use it for other people who also enjoy gaming. Thank you.